That's right, we uh, merged two pretty cool things together. We got carpool scores merging up with the Coach Stevenson show that they've been recording after games and just made all the sense to bring it all together and do kind of our own spin to it. That's right, and uh, so the format is um, we will um, open up the show here, talk a little bit about the game, we'll run down the scores, and then uh, the voice of the Jackets, Dave Stokes, and Coach Stevenson will come and review the first half with you, and um, then Barry and I will come back, we'll do some more scores for you, and uh, then Dave and Coach Stevenson will come back and, and uh, do the second half, and then uh, after that, uh, we'll give you some more scores, some meltdowns possibly, um, if those are available. If uh, Barry did his research, we'll see. Uh, you never know who stops by on those <laughs> those, show, those uh, meltdown segments. But uh, anyway, and then after that, um, the guys will wrap it up and we'll have the band, I believe, also. So just a, you know the format of the show, and uh, we appreciate you guys tuning in tonight. Um, but like I said, Barry, the first thing was Yellow Jackets win. Yeah, Yellow Jackets victorious tonight. Got off to a fast start, 35 points in the first quarter, and you know the Jackets were rolling in 42 nothing. You know, halftime lead so I think uh, for the most part I believe the coaches should be pretty happy with what they saw. I thought so um, it, it started with the coin toss Calhoun wins the coin toss and as you'll see um, later on and uh, they'll give the breakdown but um, you know they win the toss elect to receive the ball come out on offense first and uh, quick strike uh, big play um, to start the start the ball game and then end up scoring on that drive and kind of never look back and never let, let off the gas pedal um, and, until you know later on in the second half but um, like I said Dave Stokes Voices of the Jackets and Coach Stevenson will be bringing you the details of, of those um, of the game but um, you know summary for me it was just uh, solid execution on both sides of the football um, and uh, it's just a good night for football and a good win for the Jackets. Yeah, I thought the Calhoun Yellow Jackets controlled the line of scrimmage on both sides of the ball. Uh, and of course, you know, if you're going to win football games, that's really where it starts is in the trenches. And the offensive line was getting a lot of push, uh, a lot of five, six yard downfield blocks uh, just off the explosion. And then on the defensive side, even, I thought Amari Shoulders had a big game, uh, was able to get in the backfield quite a bit, made a lot of plays. and. Uh, and, that, and that's good. That's something that the, the Jackets are, are needing is that defensive line to really start making plays. And I thought they really got off to a great start tonight. Yeah, it allows your linebackers to do work, you know, to get in and do work when you're, you know, clogging up stuff um, there up front. Um, but I agree with you. Both, both lines really solid. I thought the quarterback play was very solid again tonight. Um, just did a great job delivering the ball. Um, in the spots they needed to, receivers did well, um, you know, bringing those in and then um, getting it done with speed. So, um, you know, just a all around impressive night from the ones. And then I thought uh, twos, threes, fours uh, did a solid job as well tonight. But, um, you know, uh, we are in the business of scores, Barry. Yes, sir. And um, so let's go ahead and get us kicked off with the, the our scores of the week. All right, it is your carpool scores of the week brought to you by Sonovus Bank, the bank of here. Calhoun over Ridgeland tonight, 56 to seven. Adairsville, the team, the battle of the greens. They knock off Murray County, 55 to 13. It was Campbell over Woodstock, 21 to seven. Cass gets the win over Temple, 28 to seven. Cedartown, 35 to seven winners over New Manchester. Collins Hill shuts out Rome tonight, 34 to nothing. 
Colquitt County, they knock off Valdosta, 48-42. Cartersville, get a load of this. Creekside came into this really on fire. They get the win, though. Cartersville does, 17-14 over Creekside. East Paulding, 31-28 winners over Hiram. It was Gilmer over East Jackson, 41-34. Fennin County over Southeast Whitfield, 35-6. It was Grayson knocking off Archer, 15-13. Harrelson County, 43-0 over Model tonight. <laughs> Darlington, 20-7 winners over Heard County. In a squeaker, Heritage. They knock off Christian Heritage, 25-24. It was Lafayette, 39-0 over LFO. McEachern, 42-14 over Hillgrove. Ringgold, they knock off North Murray tonight, 31-28. To mm. The Bruins, that's right, my alma mater, 28-7 <laughs> over Chattooga. Pickens, 34-10 over Coosa. It was Rockmart, 42-7 over Cahulla Creek. Tryon picked up Howard uh, tonight because Dade County had to cancel this game, and they actually got the win, Tryon did, 37-6. Warner Robins, the big rivalry game, 49-7 over Northside Warner Robins. North Springs knocking off Woodland, 13-9. Blessed Trinity travels all the way to Ric Flair land. Charlotte <laughs> Catholic, 28-10 winners tonight over Charlotte Catholic. It was uh, Lee County over Lowndes, 24-21. Thomasville, the land of the Little Wieners, 28-10 <laughs> over Bainbridge. And the Little Red Devils. Come on, Hawkins. Ah, losers. 50-16 to to tell Fair County. Yeah, they're on a, a losing streak of like three seasons so Hawkins said uh, I don't know what he's done but uh, needs to definitely uh, turn it over down in Hawkinsville but um, so that's your scores of the week um, we're gonna go to commercial break here as uh, uh, the voice of the jackets uh, Dave Stokes and coach Stevenson will come out and um, they will uh, run down the first half and give you all the details so you want to stay tuned Welcome back to the Coach Stevenson Scoreboard Show. And Coach, congratulations on a big victory, 56-7 over Ridgeland. Uh, did you do what you wanted to do? Thank you. We did. We got off to a fast start. Yes, their, you did. Uh, we challenged them to, to uh, make sure we were correct the mistakes from the Macaulay game um, uh, from the first snap. And I think we did that. The kids came out. They were, uh, they were excited to play. You know, getting <laughs> the game taken away last, last week, you, know, you could definitely tell that they didn't take it for granted. And, came out and played they played very well yeah I thought they did play very well they got off to that quick start uh, as uh, Barry and Clint mentioned you dominated on both sides of the ball and the offense was just on fire uh, the first half Christian Lewis those five touchdown passes he did he, he was he played really well and he you know, made some really tough throws as well as well you know putting some some touch on the guys that were uh, you know, some crossing routes and that kind right. of thing through the deep ball really well but I was more proud of the, the little half rolls that he was making so uh he played well and the receivers i think he was 14 for 14 so that's uh, about yeah. as good as you can do and uh so that's good protection and um overall a, a very good quarter and a half for i guess our starters i thought hall's hogs gave him good protection on the passes too they did they did that was they um they were bringing a lot of pressure they, they they brought more than we had just about every time so it ended up being a, a numbers game you know we didn't really want to throw it that much but when they have seven in the box and you've got five linemen and a running back you kind of have to 
have to throw it, and, and they did well. We had a couple young younger players get injured. I like the way the young kids came came in and played in the second half. You started substituting. You put Trey Townsend, your second string quarterback, in with the first string uh, in the second quarter. I thought that was a good move on your part to get him used to the speed of. Yeah, well, as Christian had, had, had done really well for the 14 passes they threw. And, <laughs> yes, uh, it was good to get Trey some some action with the first over line and, and, the, and the receiver still out there. So uh, it was. Very good experience for him. And, and the youngins tacked on two touchdowns in the fourth quarter. We only had three possessions in the uh, the second half, so we did well scoring on two of those. Yeah, those running clocks against a running game like yeah. that, you don't get the ball too much in the second half. But um, I think the effort was there. I wish we could have gotten the, the shutout to get some donuts, but it actually saved me a little money, so I don't have to go buy well, my you, donuts. You, you put the shutout on a hold because when they got down there, at one point we put the first string defense back in when they had yeah, first and goal right. to seven. Yeah. So you were able to preserve the shutout for a while. So, yeah, overall, a good effort. Let's get to first half highlights. So our captains for tonight's game. Hammett, number 51, Omari Shoulders. And number 62, Ty Massey. Yes. Your team captains for your Ridgeland Panthers. When, when did you decide this? Number 34. And... Never have done more with the life of the second half. Here are your. Coach, I really like the black members. Yes, you did. Yeah, but it, it's a big stadium, so we are receiving. They do a decent kickoff. We fielded it to 16 yard line, and up we come. <laughs> Yes, yeah, he did get 20 yards. First and 10 at our 41-yard line, so we have two receivers left, two right. Fake to the running back, that's Gage Leonard. Yes, it is. Almost ran out running that free safety. But our bubble screens really worked well tonight. Once again, quarterback number 14, Christian, the yellow jackets. I thought your receivers did a good job of blocking the entire night on that bubble screen. uniforms out there and a couple really big boys. The nose guard right now is huge. Yes. Pass to pick the line, Quinn Smith. He runs into the end zone. We're going to have a lot of touchdowns where our running backs and our receivers get into the end zone untouched and that's the to the down for the block. And number 99, Sergio Sanchez's kick is up, and it's good. Your score, the Yellow Jackets, seven. Six for six tonight, and kicked off well. You substitute a lot of different kickers in kickoffs also. That's Carlos Lopez kicking off, and he does it. So, yeah. Long, lean, and slender. He does a good job. I thought our kickoffs tonight, getting down to the 10, uh, I think we had one down to the five yard line. Yes, you have. I thought they did too. Black shirts on defense. And the, the running backs didn't have a whole lot of room. Yeah, they were playing Mason Green on the bottom of that tackle. Once again, they hand off to the right-hand side. And at the beginning of the game, they wanted to run from left to right. We've got a, another strong hit. There's Christian Lewis in there. New Hawkins finished up on that. Yes. This official was very quick with his signals. I had a hard time picking him up. But Clinton Barry had to help me out. Yes, he did have enough opportunities, even during a running clock. But anyway, they hand off once again. They're going left to right, and we just got that swallowed up. 
On the ball carrier, the 34, Jonathan Woodall. How big a night did Amari's shoulders have? And the idea was to maybe get a block. But the snapper's throwing rainbows back there is where he had a chance to get. So first and ten for the Jackets. We're just shy of the 50-yard line. We pick up a whole lot of yards. We ran the ball tonight, but we picked up enough to keep the chains moving. I like Quinn's two stiff arms out there to get him positive yards on you. happy with this play. Right? I like how Cole kind of slyly looks over his shoulder and says, you know what, you're not going to catch me. So the Jackets score another touchdown. That was from Christian to Cole, and that was a 43-yard streak on the right-hand side. Sergio is going to get an extra point that almost hits the track later on in the game. Fourteen to nothing, and that score came with 7:46 left in the first quarter. So they pick it up at around the 10-yard line. He's carrying it like a left of and hoping someone gets a hold of it. Oh, there it is! My guy comes out. And coming up with that ball. Yes, I see Brooks. So we're in great field position. We have a third 22 yard line. 7.33 left in the half of the first quarter. Number oh, five, Cole Spear in for a yellow jacket. Yeah, he came, he came from the wing on the left hand side, didn't he? You know, when, when you got your ball on the cast and it doesn't get touched, you're happy, aren't you? <laughs> exactly. So another extra point by Sergio. Yeah, he is. You can see he put that in there. I'm on the other track. They, they warmed up well in the pregame kickoff. All the kickers did. I was watching. Return. And that would be nice to have you got a nice rotation of kickers going right now. Yeah, Yes. First and ten. First time they run a play from right to left, and we got it stuffed. On the ball carry with 12. Did uh, Lex get many snaps at tight end, or we kind of hold him out of it? Yeah, did that? Uh, a little hesitation. Well, this kid's 5'7 and goes about 210. He's got quick feet. Yes. There's an itching play. The black shirts are ready to go. This is a sophomore quarterback. He's tall, 6'5, 6'6. Can we go? Yeah, he made him rush the toe because he's got a bend in the hands for tackling him. That is a worst of all. I like this pickup here. I like that ball going. It comes off to the races. He wasn't there. He's off. Gage running around in the ball on the left hand side. Behind the sophomore and senior, sophomore guard and senior tackle, Kendrick Kirby is the senior tackle. Yeah, we were next to the coaches up in the box and, and they really wanted that pass thrown. But I thought Christian did a nice job. He was looking to the other side of the field and yeah. made it a good positive out of that. Ball start against yes. the Yellow Jackets. Yeah, look at the procedure. I'll push back to the 29 yard line. Pass complete to number 12, Dustin. That's the curse with the interception. Looking right there, and we throw it to the big boy. Pass complete to number three, Peyton Law. Six. 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 Six.
to see one of your short receivers later on make, make a really high catch. Caden Williams running the ball out of a lot of space. As you said, they like to jam the box. Nice catch by Peyton. Nice throw by Christian. Put him in the air spot. He can catch it. That's Christian's fourth touchdown pass in the first quarter. So on the kick, the extra point is Sergio Sanchez. I like when uh, later on I'm giving it away, but as you can see, three minutes left in the quarter. And this was broadcast by a TV station out of Chattanooga, so we had some TV timeouts. <laughs> Toe meets Leather as he boots the ball down the field, down to the seven yard line, coach. Yeah. Luke Hawkins in there, Dustin Kearns, Christopher Lewis. Here we are in a stack 3-3, putting some pressure on him. I think the sophomore quarterback from Ridgeland, if he would get some help, could play quarterback. Yeah. yeah he, he's not running very far right now. That ball comes through. I, I missed that ball coming loose. Mason Green came up with that fumble recovery. On the block there, number 12, yeah. So first and 10 for the Jackets from the 25-yard line of Ridgeland. And we're looking down in the deep corner and this is it. on the play. Yes. That was a well-thrown pass. I mean, right over his shoulder. He, he couldn't have. He couldn't have gone out there and handed it to him any better. Hand off to Caden Williams on the left hand side. He's following the freshman tight end, the senior left tackle, and the oh, sophomore left guard. Yeah. And we were, Barry and I had to guess that Mari's height and weight. This is a nice run. This turns into a positive play. On the ball up there at the 21, Caden Williams. It's time for a Dick Sporting Goods third down. Well, they've, they've seen this run about effective in our previous two games. Two receivers left and two right. We're moving in again looking for another touchdown before this quarter ends. And he throws it up in the middle. <laughs> Mr. Sticky Fingers. Yeah, it's complete in traffic. I'll tell you what, he didn't play like he's 5'7". Oh, and yeah. uh, Clint said the same thing on the live broadcast. He said, just go down. Driving catch made by number two, Brendan Gray, for a yellow jacket touchdown. Coach, he looked like Superman. He had his cape out and laid out the to the ground. Made that big catch to get it down to the floor. And he jumped up like a dunk of the basketball. Then he ran a big kick. Now, he makes that catch and where is he right now? Snapping the ball. And how hard is that for Cleveland to keep switching? Up, it's good. Yeah, it is. Ten and a half seconds left in the first quarter, and we're up 35 to nothing. We've had five possessions in the first quarter, and we've scored five TDs. Well, we can score less TDs if you want. I think you like the TDs. Yeah, if it had gone up the field, it would have been an excellent kickoff. But for some reason, he waited. Illegal substitution against Illegal substitution. Original. Yeah, the, the coaches next to us said they got 12 players on the field. Handoff going left to right again. And that brings the end of the first quarter. quarter. The coaches have to run tape back and forth to find out who makes it. It's constant. Give to the running back. And On the ball carry for the 
that they had the penalty to begin with, so it's third down. From the 40, 40 yard line. Look at, look at the goal of the match. On the ball carry number five. So it's going to bring up a fourth down punting situation. They've been putting pressure on them the whole time. Getting the penalty for Russell. Toby Turner gets the punt off down to about the... So first and ten for the Jackets. We're in the second quarter, our first possession. We're at our 33-yard line. And here's the... On the ball, carry to the six. Another bubble screen. Pass to Blake, number 11, Dan Curtis. He's been out Flag on the play, holding against the Yellow Jacket. Got a block in the back on us. Two receivers to the left. We'll pump fake. What we, what we wanted to do. Okay. I know I know he batted at least three times. So first and ten for the Jackets after that. We're at their 23-yard line. And untouched again, coach. On the ball carry to the side, Cole Spear in for a Jack Beckman. I missed this play. I thought it was just a reverse. I missed that it was a pass. Another touchdown pass. Yes. Missed it. Not He's going to get dizzy switching from side to each side of the tee. Good snap from Brennan. Kicks up. And like I said, Six for six on extra points tonight. Eight twenty-three left. We're at forty-two. Yeah. Down to the ten-yard line on a kickoff. Oh! That's a yeah. the ball carry the kickoff return. I'm surprised the kid stood up after that. Showing blitz from the defense is left. Make another dog pile right there. And Minimum the game. Ball carrier. Right at the middle. Yeah, you saw substituting. It, it was a beautiful night to play. No humidity. Pretty pleasant. Oh, it was surrounded by the mountains. It, it was a good looking place. This guy is just a chunk to get a hold of. His legs are big. Good flag here at the end of this. Personal foul, face mask against the Yellow Jacket. He's starting to get some substitutions in there. You got fake. Got it down to the 39 yard line and then passing and finishing. That's a tough call, coach. Yeah, yeah that's a tough call. Another set of officials might not have called that. It just depends on who you have. Throw this out here in the flat. He almost lost the ball. He almost got it out of his hands. Pass complete to number one, Darian Bird. That's two weeks. They get a personal foul against us at the end of that play. Yeah, I didn't see it while I was so, that's what they call it. Yeah. We do him a hit when he's in the white zone. So they have it first and goal at the seven. They've got uh, we brought in a couple other guys and just fortified the defense and make sure they didn't get into the end zone. There you go. Hang on to that ankle. Christopher, hold on to that ankle. To help Kane. Richland calls a timeout because they want to look timeout. at the play that they're going to run. And they had some trouble lining up at times. Quarterback rolls to the right out of the shotgun. Looking for somebody down where everybody's covering. That's a coverage sack. You might as well call it. 
Nick can do his job. That's the set. Yeah, that's the middle linebacker that goes all the way across. Yeah, Dustin had a good night. So the Jackets take over at their 10 yard line. We got Trey Townsend and a quarterback. Yeah, we do. We're trying to, um, obviously, get him in with the first group. This series starts with 420 left in the first half, and we're up 42 to nothing. Nice defensive stop by the Black Shirts. Yes, he was. Yeah. Chattanooga TV station. Freezing at the line of scrimmage. Got tight end to the right. And Trey, Trey's a sophomore. Yep. Caden Williams. Nice run. On the ball carry for the yellow First and ten, that's a 21. Another good run. Like I said, when you look at the end of the game stats, we didn't have that many rushing yards, but we had some significant runs. Yeah, we did. That's just from the, that's what they were giving us. Exactly. So got a nice bubble screen out here. We got a good blocking. I like how your lineman came out and got on the other side of that defensive person so he could block him on the front letters. Yeah, Which one was he throwing to? Um, I think he was throwing to him over. Okay. Hand off to Gage Leonard. On the ball carry, number six, Gage Leonard. Gage doesn't mind contact. He does not. <laughs> Another bubble screen out here. Nice move to the inside. Nick Cross for blocking the back there. Yep. Negated that play, but uh, I like how Cam's accelerating when he catches the pass. Yeah, I was trying to force something out here. So we got <laughs> Drop it straight back. Get it out here in the flat. Nice spin move by Gage Leonard. Puts his shoulder down and runs over that guy. Exactly. First and ten. Nice, nice jump cut. Yeah, we're trying to get the Just a little bit under throw. We'll get that left shoulder. So what, what was the deal here? Oh, is it? Okay. Whistle blew and he snapped it. She's supposed to be a snapping thing. Right. And, and, and you talked and talked and finally somebody must have alerted you and I think you got the timeout call with seven tenths of a second left. No, I was arguing with him. I know. Field goal. I said, two seconds. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, for your there and. First, first half comes to a close. Yeah. We're up 42 so. to nothing, so you're feeling pretty good. And we're going to turn it back over to Barry and Clint, and we'll be back with the second half. But we're going to take a commercial break right now. Awesome. And you're against the... Oh, 
Welcome back to the Coach Stevenson Scoreboard Show. And uh, you just saw the breakdown of the first half of Yellow Jackets versus Ridgeland where Calhoun had a, a nice padded lead there going into halftime. Yeah, 42 to nothing. That was, uh, that was a pretty decent padding uh, there at halftime for the Jackets. And, you know, gearing up for the second half, I think everybody kind of knew that uh, – you know, the second string was going to be coming in and was anticipating seeing some guys that maybe we haven't seen a whole lot of in the past. And it was pretty cool getting to see some of those guys hit the field for the first time. Yeah, it was. I thought they, they played pretty well. I thought the pursuit to the ball um, on the defensive side was was solid. I thought um, just got a lot of, of uh, solid effort um, out of all the kids that, that got into the game tonight. Yes, definitely. I, I saw several guys that, um, you know, showed a lot of promise out there. Um, I thought, you know, Christian Gregory did a pretty good job uh, from his defensive line position. Um, I thought that uh, Lance Mauld made several plays. Christian Smith made some plays. And uh, Brian Arnold got his first touchdown tonight. So, uh, you know, a lot of, lot of highlights, I think, in the second half that you're going to see on the video here in just a little bit. Yeah, so you definitely want to stay tuned for that. But before we go to that, let's uh, run down some scores for the folks. That's right. It is your carpool scores of the week brought to you by Synovus Bank, the bank of here. It was Calhoun over Ridgeland, 56-7. The Battle of the Green at Ayersville over Murray County, 55-13. Campbell knocks off Woodstock, 21-7. It was Cass over Temple, 28-7. Cedartown, 35-7 winners over New Manchester. Collins Hill shuts out Rome tonight, 34 to nothing. Colquitt County, they knock off Valdosta, 48-42. It was Cartersville with a big win, 17-14, over a pretty good Creekside team. East Paulding, 31-28 winners over Hiram. It was Gilmer over East Jackson, 41-34. Fanning County, 35-6 winners over Southeast Whitfield. Grayson, 15 to 13 over Archer. It was Harrelson County, 43 to nothing over Model tonight. Darlington, 20 to seven winners over Heard County. The Battle of the Heritages. There's a lot of heritage in this game. A lot of heritage. Heritage, they knock off Christian Heritage, 25, 24 and a squeaker. Lafayette, 39 to nothing over LFO. McEachern, 42 to 14 over Hillgrove. It was Ringgold over North Murray, 31 to 28. Northwest Whitfield, 28-7 winners over Chattooga. Pickens knocks off Coosa, 34-10. Cahala Creek went into this game 2-0 for the first time in the school history, but now they're 2-1. Mm -hmm. They lose to Rockmart, 42-7. Tryon, they picked up Howard this week as uh, Dade County had to cancel, and Tryon gets the win, 37-6. Warner Robins knocks off their rivalry. Northside Warner Robins, 49-7. It was North Springs over Woodland, 13-9. Blessed Trinity travels to Ric Flair land. Woo! That's right, Charlotte, North Carolina. They knock off Charlotte Catholic, 28 to 10. Lee County over at Lowndes, 24-21. And Thomasville. Of course. Where the Vienna sausages live. 28 to 10 over Bainbridge. And the Little Red Devils. Come on, man, Jason Hawkins. What are you doing, dude? 50 Slack. to 16. 50. Slack. To Telfair County. Slack. That's your... That's week, man. Scores of the week. Um, also want to make note, Gordon Central uh, here luckily was off, and so was Norville tonight. And um, they'll be back in action next week. Yeah, but, you know, looking at the scores, uh, the region really performed tonight. Uh, you know, I think Hiram was... Well, Woodland lost as well, but... You know, Cass getting a win tonight. Mm -hmm. Blessed Trinity traveling out to Charlotte. Uh, got that win. That was pretty big for them. And then, of course, uh, Cartersville yeah. getting the big win over Creekside. That's going to turn some heads, I think, across state. Yeah, I don't know a whole lot about the, the Charlotte squad that uh, Blessed Trinity went and played, but um, Cartersville making that comeback late in the fourth quarter to, to win that ball game versus Creekside was uh, really impressive. Um, but... Um, that's all right. We'll, you know, Jacket, so uh, looking, you know, ahead to, to uh, the region play, it'll be, uh, it'll definitely be competitive. 
Yes, it will. And, uh, you know, there's some college football coming up this weekend, Clint. And, uh, you know, not, not as many big games as what we saw on the opening weekend, but uh, we do have Ohio State and Oregon, as I know Mrs. Stokes is taking a little bit of interest in this game. Yeah, we picked that. If you've watched, uh, you can still watch it, but um, and listen to it. It's the the prediction show that we we uh, put out every week. Um, Dave, Coach Stevenson, Barry, and I um, trying to see who can um, who can pick them straight up um, and and take home the trophy. Uh, we won't talk about who won last year, but uh, we we'll, we'll just move on past that. But anyway, <laughs> <You> cheated. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, we um, speaking of college football, the meltdown segment is alive after uh, the first week completed of college football. Right. So you want to stay tuned after Coach Stevenson and, and Dave break down the second half for you. So um, if you'll stay tuned, we're going to go to commercial break, and we'll we'll come right back and break down the second half for you. Welcome back to the second half. Yellow Jackets with a 42 to nothing lead. When did you find out that you were going to have a running clock in the third quarter? Yeah, you find out when you get back out there because it's the it's the coach's choice in the third quarter, and then you know it's, no, it's nobody's. It's uh, automatic in the fourth. So uh, it's good and bad. You know, for road games, it's normally pretty good and get back a little bit sooner. But um, it just limits how many plays you get to yes. play and how many kids you get to get in. But uh, we were pleased with it tonight for sure. Yeah, we're, we're going to get three possessions in the second half, and uh, it, it keeps you hustling on the sidelines uh, on how, how many kids you're going to get in and who's going to play where. I like the fact that you've got some offensive players playing some defense, so we're going to take a look at the second half. Yellow Jackets won the coin toss, received to start the game, so we're kicking off, and we're using a freshman right footed soccer style kicker as soon as we get lined up there. Davey smacked him. Yeah. <laughs> it, it gave us time to uh, finish our commercial on the live broadcast. Yeah, so everything worked out well for us. So toe meets leather as Carlos Lopez booms it down the field to about the 17 yard line. Good coverage here. Yeah, we're a little worried. That's what we're doing. Oh, he's there. Yeah. You did a nice job. On the kickoff return, yeah, number with the tackle. Time you go sideways on the kickoffs. Yeah. Well, Stover Morgan did a good job of posting him up and not letting him go forward. And Stover, by the way, is a sophomore. 20 run, the ball carrier, Ridge left. New face in there, Colton Floyd, running back of Lance Mall, Christian Smith. New game, Christian Gregory. I think that's Montez Byrne. Yep. The ball came to off to number 20. So well as the other one. Montez Bird and Christian Gregory. Yeah. yeah. Mr. Gregory looks like he's going to fill out to be a nice sized young man. CJ Hawkins, corner, Caleb Bradley. Oh, no, well, that's my favorite. Rachel, right. uh, as you see there, is going to back him up to the 18 yard line. It's a good play call here. Rally the Pass the plate to number 12, Chase Watkins. Yeah, Dustin will rally it for you a lot. Dustin, he got a lot of snaps in tonight. He, he plays hard. 
forces a punt. <laughs> yeah, no, exactly. What we're looking for. It's probably the first time he's been that close to a punt. Say. Yeah, uh, we just about got it. Yeah, he did. Against the Yellow Jacket. Yeah, it, it, one position that we lost. Right there. <laughs> if he'd have got some of the ball, we'd have been okay with that. Good coverage. Yeah, there you go, yeah. He didn't have any place to throw it, so the turf fielded it for him. Yeah, this is a tough formation right here to, to line up to. we got to do something a little bit different on the back end. Like, was, 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 right. was that a broken play to begin with? No, I think that's what You think they right. wanted to do that with the quarterback? Yeah, they, Unbalanced on one side, it makes us just a little bit on defense. Holding against, guys. yeah, holding against them, and um, they called pass interference on this one. Yeah. Does it make any difference in high school whether you're looking at the ball or not? No, he, he said. Um, uh, Who knows what he yeah. said? He said okay. he did it before then. So. Oh, okay, all right. So the quick, they go to some quick outs right here. And yeah, they did a good job of taking what was there. We're going to let them throw it. Underneath all right. right if, they, if they want to. Nice running play. And we've got number 59 in there on the tackle. That is Christian Bell. you got an offensive player yeah, on the defensive yeah. side. Who's got the green gloves? I think that's Imari. Imari? <laughs> that's so the quarterback can see him running around when yeah. he sticks his hand up, throw me the ball. Nice light pressure. Yeah, bring pressure there, and again, that's just. A but this is a good tackle. A good open field tackle. Yeah, nice open field tackle by C.J. Hawkins. That's a good job there by oh, the freshman yeah. and sophomore. Just stuffing and another sophomore. I say all sophomores yeah, and freshmen right. around the ball. That's, that's good for the future. Yes, it does. Shotgun formation. Another. Quick route underneath, and once again, another open field, good tackle. Yeah, it was a good tackle by C.J., and Corbin Fuller came in and finished him up. Yeah, Corbin's going to finish him up all right. Corbin runs the ball and plays well from the middle linebacker. Yeah, you know, this guy, he, he pumped this side, and he actually had it. Had he stayed on the, the pump side, and um, we were lucky that he, he went back across the field. I thought we had good – I thought we went to the ball well defensively there. Nice sack. A very good sack by Corbin. Lance Maldon. I think that was fourth down, yeah. Yes, it was. We take over on downs. Yellow Jackets with a big lead. Yeah, we got, we got our backups in and they did a good job of, uh, Corbin did a good job of making that first guy miss and making something out of nothing. On first down, they jumped off sides. Ridgeland did. When we started this possession, it was our first of the second half. There was 2.48 left in the third quarter. So we didn't have much time. Mm. <laughs> the reference. <laughs> I think, was this the one he? Yeah, well, no, it was the same thing. That, that we snapped it as soon as the whistle blew, and that's a, it's a penalty. Okay, all right. Um, now I get we're there waiting to play, and they hadn't blown in yet. Okay, I got you. So that, that was the delay of game. That's the same thing that happened on our screen on third down earlier to, to Caden. Okay. You snap it right at the whistle. No, that's illegal. Throw the ball deep and just a little bit underthrown. Yeah, just late with it. Um, you know, I had it open. Just it was just too too long of a throw to uh, to make. But it was just about there. Yeah, our only turnover of the game. By the way, we we took two turnovers from them, so we're getting back. We're even on the season. We're on the right. zero side. So th this is good. So we're going to we're moving up. We're moving to the positive. Had a blind side block on the interception turn, which is what you know you have a tendency to do. Yep. So the whistle had blown that play dead. That's why the referee goes back and gets the ball after it rolled into the end zone. <clears throat> Illegal procedure against Ridgeland. Backs him up. So it's going to be first down from the 10 yard line. It was a good look there. Good look there. I can't tell who made it. But it was a good tackle. Got uh, Jose Oriana playing nose. And Terry Moss playing in. Good tackle by Cameron Dodd. You see how Cameron posted up and just waited for the guy and then exploded into him? End of the third quarter, we're still yes, up. moving a little faster than the, the first half. 
Yes, it is. It's going to slow down a little bit. That's a good tackle by Brian Arnold. Yeah, Brian playing from the free safety position. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Showing blitz from the right hand side of the defense, and then they're just a host of black shirts on the tackle wearing white shirts tonight. That's right. But with black. Yeah. Numbers. Yeah. We, 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 just for y'all. We, we do like the black numbers. Good hit. Yeah, that's Lance Malden and um, CJ, I think. So I think we'll give him a mini slobber knocker on that. Yeah. He hit him pretty good on that. They brought in a new quarterback, a little left-hander. That pass is underthrown and, and good coverage. Good coverage, and you got Yamari you putting those green gloves up. It doesn't give him much. Uh, <laughs> Caleb Ray was under coverage. They're going to punt again. We told Christian to take it easy on him, so he stayed away that time. He had a little decent roll. We're going to take over. Just at our 34-yard line. So, 8-11 left in the fourth quarter. So we had one possession in the third. This is our first possession in the fourth. Trey rolls to the right-hand side. Little pump fake gets the ball out there. Nice move to the yeah, inside. Good throw, good catch. You got a face mask. But Caleb Ray had the catch and had two or three extra yards. Yeah, we're going to get this face mask penalty. Puts us into their territory. So we have first down. And this is Corbin Fuller running hard. Yeah, he is. And I don't think he was down. I'm going to have to watch that again. Um, he didn't look like he was down on the replay there. No. Because he was ready to go to the house. But they, they'd they blown it dead. So we get it first and 10. This is a great job. That's the way he draw it up. Um, good throw, good catch. And then I think CJ uh, gave him the pass to the end zone. Nice block out there. And Brian Arnold gets his first receiving touchdown. That's right. Showed a little speed. He's yeah, faster than his dad. He's very much faster. <laughs> Line up for the extra point. And that's number 99. If you haven't figured it out, Sergio Sanchez. And we got Isaac Green in there holding now, um, which Isaac's a, he's our left handed specialist, or left footed specialist holder, I guess you'd say. Well, he's, he's a good job over on that side. He's going to get some big play. Isaac's going to get a big play here later in the game. Ball bounced around. They pick it up just inside the 10 yard line. He wants to start running laterally, and we, we love it. Yeah. And laterally, it gives us time. And, to there, and the there's the play. Isaac Green gets the fumble recovery. You know what? I, I think he almost caused the fumble. And Ben Williams. Um, I think he stuck his shoulder in, and the, the ball popped out. Yeah. Uh, 36 and uh, McCaden Griffin, freshman fourth. Kickoff team. Got a new quarterback. Yeah, got Andrew Purdy. Freshman. Yeah. yeah, Evan Rees is a freshman in there. Um, Chris Farrell is tight. Um, it's been fast. Trying Good. to get all the names. You're, you're doing Tom well. Keep it up. I think it's center. Lance Chastain at right guard. Gavin Navarre, I think, went in at uh, he did. H or Y. Yes. I didn't realize Purdy was that big. Yeah, I was standing next to him at practice. And I saw him out here tonight. Yeah, we're trying, I'm trying to bleed as much clock as I can. Yes, you are. You're taking your time. I really wanted, to, really wanted to shut out more than the score here. Exactly. Corbin gets the ball. He gets the touchdown. Designed to go probably off left guard, left tackle. He bounced it outside, and he went untouched. Yeah, he did a good job. He, he's, a, he's one of the best practice players we got. He, he works his tail off um, Monday through Wednesday. And, uh, it's nice to see him get some, uh, get to pay dirt. Yeah. What's his last name, Coach? Fuller. They all work hard. That's right. I mean, <laughs> every Fuller that's come through here has worked hard. So he, he's keeping up the lineage. So toe meets leather. We've got this score at 49 to nothing. There's 7.02 left with a running clock. Hey, Gavin Ballard in on the uh, tackle? Yes. Eric Pittman in, uh, 31. Another kid that gives us everything he has during the week, so it's nice to see him um, get some playing time. Stubb Morgan, Nate Fowler out there. You know, he took, number 31, took the right pursuit angle, and the kid did break the tackle, and he came right to 31, and 31 brought him down. If, if he had gone in to join on the tackle, he wouldn't have been there to make that tackle. He, he would have missed. Good job. Eric Pittman. Junior doing a good job. Yeah, that's what I said. He's, he's a one that works his tail off, and it's fun to watch him. Jacob Greason in there. Got Jacob Schuler down here. Another Jacob. Hey, we're running a wing tee. 
That's the uh, favorite sweep out of the wing T formation. Really want to stop right here. And hand off, and they go over to the left, tackle left guard and get a nice push and get into the end zone. Get in. Saving me some money with the donut. Yes, it does. I did tell them this. I said if they um, return the kickoff yes. for a touchdown, I was going to get them donuts anyway. And they kicked the walker, and he made it to about midfield before he got tackled. But, um, you know, it was uh, overall a good night. You know, we did what we wanted to do. We came out and um, executed from the get-go, got off to a fast start or something that we did not do our first two games. So hopefully we can – Bit on that and then, you know, learn from what we did um, poorly this game and improve on that next week against uh, Woodstock. Which we've never been to Woodstock before, so it'll be in, in, interesting to travel down there. I'm looking forward to, to going down there. It'll be yeah. fun to go down there and get a victory yeah. over a 7A school. Yeah, we can yeah. go down there and compete, so we're looking yeah. forward to it. We had a couple boys leave the field uh, limping. Uh, outside of that, uh, we came out of the game pretty pretty well as far as injuries are concerned? Yeah, I think so. They um, they, they were both walking off, I think. Oh, just, good. Uh, I didn't hear the final report, but we'll, we'll touch base in the morning and see what they were, but I think they'll be fine. Overall, satisfied with the game? Very satisfied. You know, that's We, we challenged them to, to come out and, and play hard and play fast. It didn't matter who we were playing because, um, like I said, when it gets taken away from you and you don't get to play a game, um, you know, that's all I told them in pregame. I was like, guys, we get – we get to play football, and they were pumped up about it and, and went out and, and played good football there. They played hard, and they did play fast because you had five possessions in the first quarter, and you racked up a 35 to nothing lead. So we are going to take a look at the band, but first we're going to, we're going to see the band perform. But before we do that, we're going to get the guys back in here, Barry and Clint, and they're going to give you some more scores. And yeah, a couple things um, before that happens. Yes. Middle school had a, a great win against Cass this week. Um, I think they beat them 33-6 or 26-6. It was a, uh, a good win. And the JV beat Chattanooga Christian uh, yesterday. Um, it's tough to find JV games. We have to go go all over the place. We had two scheduled with Buford and Ryan Hart that didn't, didn't quite get to happen. Um, so next week we've got – Busy. We've got um, a JV game uh, at Model Monday and a night grade game at or Cedartown Monday and Model Thursday and at Woodstock Friday. So we've, we've got a lot of road trips, a lot of buses that are going to be traveling. So uh, hopefully we'll, we'll uh, uh, farewell and, and move we, on to next week. We don't play too many Tennessee schools. So what was the, the Chattanooga Christian School like? They were actually pretty good. Were they? they? Were good. Yeah, they were better than I thought they would be. Um, so it was a, it was a good 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 matchup. Yeah. Good matchup. And wait a minute. Are you starting to move out of your Barker lounger? Just sit back and relax. We've got the Calhoun band coming up. The best dog on band in the land. They're going to be led onto the field under the direction of Larry Brown, led onto the field by the drum majors, Casey Chapman, Catherine Govinian, Marley Jackson and Lily Stevens. That's going to come after the carpool fellows come back, Barry and Clint. And you want to stick around because they're going to have the meltdown. And then after the meltdown, you'll see the best doggone band in the land of Pride of Georgia's Northland. You, we're going to take a commercial timeout. We'll be back with Barry and Clint. Welcome back to the Coach Stevenson Scoreboard Show. Uh, in, the, in the first one, 
uh, of this season. And uh, we kicked it off with a win tonight. The Jackets, you just watched uh, the first and second half breakdown. Uh, the total game breakdown with the coach and Dave Stokes. And, um, you know, it was a, like we said, Barry, it was a, a good night for Yellow Jacket football. Yeah, it was a great night for Yellow Jacket football. And, uh, you know, like I said, this is the first ever Coach Stevenson scoreboard show. And, you know, hey, got rookies in here. We're, we're, we're learning as we go. And I think it ended up okay. Yeah, smooth show, uh, you know, the professional uh, that Dave is, um, you know, leading uh, with with Coach Stevenson, breaking down game film is is um, always a, a treat. And um, I don't know, really well, I was getting ready to say, we're, I was about to say <laughs> the same thing. We uh, definitely, uh, we could use some upgrades on our side of the desk, but um, Man, we're, yourself. We're, good to, we're good to be here. Let's run down scores real quick one more time, and then we will get down to our metal down segment. All right, it is your carpool scores of the week, sponsored by Sonova's Bank, the Bank of Here, Calhoun over Ridgeland, fifty-six to seven, Adairsville winning the Battle of the Green, fifty-five thirteen over Murray County, Campbell knocking off Woodstock, twenty-one to seven. It was Cass over Temple, twenty-eight to seven, Cedartown, thirty-five seven winners over New Manchester, Collins Hill knocks off Rome, thirty-four to nothing. Colquitt County, they get the win over Valdosta, 48-42. Cartersville, 17-14 over Creekside. It was East Paulding, 31-28 winners over Hiram. Gilmer, 41-34 winners over East Jackson. Fannin County, 35-6 over Southeast Whitfield. Grayson, 15-13 winners over Archer. It was Harrelson County, 43-0 over Model. Darlington, 20-7 over Heard County. It was Heritage knocking off Christian Heritage, 25-24. Lafayette, 39-0 over LFO. McEachern, 42-14 winners over Hillgrove. Ringgold, 31-28 over North Murray tonight. Northwest Whitfield, 28-7 winners over Chattooga. It was Pickens over Coosa, 34-10. Gala Creek was 2-0, now they're 2-1. They lose to Rockmart tonight, 42-7. Tryon had to pick up a game this week as Dade County had to cancel, so they picked up Howard of Tennessee, 37-6 winners over Howard tonight. Warner Robins, 49-7 over Northside Warner Robins. It was North Springs over Woodland, 13-9. Blessed Trinity goes into the land of Ric Flair. Woo! And gets the win, 28-10 over Charlotte of Catholic. Lee County, 24-21 winners over Lowndes. And the Oscar Mayer Wieners! Thomasville, 28 to 10, winners over Bainbridge. Telfair County and Hawkinsville, those little red devils, how did they do? Losers, Just again, get it. Hawkins, man, come on. Couldn't get it done. You had one job this off season and you've let us down again. That was it. So, hey. as your scores for the week. That's right, we appreciate that, Barry, and thank you to Sonovis for sponsoring that for us. And um, it is time, folks for the meltdown segment and if this is the first time you've ever heard the meltdown segment what happens is we do some research um, out there on the message boards of college uh, of uh, if your team loses the fans go out there and typically put down just some complete meltdowns out there and um, you know you you typically don't want your team to end up on this list no it means something bad happened usually uh, so every now and then it. we get a team that won on here very rare but sometimes all right well let's go ahead and give it to the people who made the meltdown list for le this week well we've got a couple of tigers some hurricanes and some Seminoles Yep. Oh, of course. Of course. Seminoles. All right. LSU, Clemson, Miami, and Florida State. Welcome to the meltdowns. LSU, if Max just has it, then it ain't accuracy. What kind of defensive line formation was that? They were outside the guards. My old fat rear end could have run 10 yards on that one. Coach O interviewed after the game. Go Tigers. <laughs> Clemson, this is like watching paint dry, but worse. At least something happens when paint dries. I think the front row at a ladies' bingo night would be a better offensive line. The winner of this crap show will get the honor of losing to Bama down the road. Congratulations. All the cuss words, every single one of them. 
our offensive line would get pushed out of the way by a midget at a buffet. <laughs> Miami! As long as Manny Diaz is our coach, we will have a hard time even winning the Greater Miami Athletic Conference High School Championship. <laughs> That's the truth. We really brought out the turnover chain down 27 and TD <laughs> rings down 32. I bet that struck a lot of fear in Alabama. <laughs> I was wondering about that. I am starting to view the whole turnover chain thing as the most embarrassing thing in Miami history. It's neck and neck with the loss to Florida International. Michael Irvin said pregame, we are going to shock the world. I'm pretty shocked right now. All right, time to take a crap. <laughs> Good night. <coughs> Florida State. We just honored our history by missing that kick wide to lose the game. Again. <laughs> And last but not least, I bet Clint picked Florida State again. We owe this loss to you. <laughs> and there you have it, folks. The first week of this college football season's meltdown segment. That last one may not have been on a message board. Uh, yeah. Well, you know, I'm sure <laughs> there's probably made, plenty the this season are real. <laughs> that uh, aren't on the message board. And cleaned up. <laughs> <laughs> Well, it was a, uh, a very nice night for football, as, as everybody's talked about. Um, Jackets win on to next week on the road, uh, again, versus Woodstock. Um, got any thoughts about that game? Peace. Hey, Woodstock, you know, they, they came here last year, and, you know, I, I think if they, I remember I was, what, 31-14, 31-17, something like that. It was a, it was a decent game, and, um, you know, I'm looking forward to – making the road trip and seeing these jackets put two in a row on the board. Yeah, definitely a little bit of a different area um, to go down and, and take on an opponent. Um, so look forward to the competition and um, we hope you guys will join us next week um, after the game. Um, same places you can find us, uh, YouTube uh, definitely out there. Uh, you can watch the game um, on YouTube as well. And uh, you can use the Mixler app. You can listen if you don't if you don't do the YouTube thing. Uh, we've got various um, various platforms that various you can check us out. Free platforms, may I add? Free is the operative word. Free. That's right. There's still, people that think you have to pay to listen to Yellow Jacket football on Friday nights. That's not true. That's right. So tune in next week uh, to the Coach Stevenson Scoreboard Show, and um, we'll check you then. Have a good weekend. Ohio Alumni Association, American Legion Post 214, Paula Shannon Wells, Flintstone Child Care, Back to Health Chiropractic, Amigos at Peerless Mill, Live Label Market. Starting things off, the Marching Yellow Jackets will perform the Pretender by the Foo Fighters. Trumpet soloist is Dario Moso. And Dynamite by Tayo Cruz. Followed by the drum break, Quarantined Diddles. Last, we will feature our majorettes and color guard on the song Best Friend. The Calhoun band staff includes Tracy Faraba, Majorette Instructor, Meredith Lackman, Color Guard Instructor, Jonathan Lackman, Visual Instructor, Jessica Tucker, Auxiliary Instructor, and Robert Melville, Percussion Instructor. The Yellow Jackets are directed by Thomas Osborne and Larry Brown. Drum majors Lily Stevens, Marley Jackson, Casey Chapman, and Catherine Gavinian. Is the band ready? You may take the field.